I'm mic'd up medicine. Dosage really lethal. Dope is vocals in the needle. Potent spoken for the people. No way equal. You don't understand. I underline and in the science written. Niggas indecisive. I decipher physics. You was exercising limits. Reaching when you writing lyrics. Sliding with them lines. All they rappers are violinists. I'm confused. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is DSP News, the unreliable ones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the newsroom. And welcome to Gautopia News Network. Newly acquired, uh, we hope that this partnership with GTG Network and Productions is fruitful and produces some hopefully entertaining, if not informative, uh, products as the time goes on. I'm not sure if I would consider a broadcast as a product, but uh, let's just go with it for now, with, for the lack of a better term. I haven't slept in like 12 hours, so it is what it is on that one. Um, been out of town. Uh, for work, missed out on a bunch of stuff, so we'll do a brief catch up on what's going on. Get it catch up. Anyway, uh, we'll we'll briefly catch up on some of the stuff that happened, and then we will lead into the broadcast at hand. Um, shouts out to everybody, to be honest with you, not just my peers, but uh, you know, just everybody in general. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this broadcast is uh, being done on September first, two thousand eighteen. It's amazing how the uh, the year goes by and if I remember correctly my year anniversary just kind of passed so I guess that means officially I'm out, out of my rookie season so that's kind of cool um <laughs> that's uh that's that's kind of special so uh, there we go on that um so where do we start off where do we go from here so we're currently at a with Mr. Huffstuffs and Snorpernell my favorite one-two punch dark side Phil YouTube ad investigation, that's going to be Mr. Stuffs, and then Snorpernell, DSP Gaming. Uh, YouTube money and begging his fan base to, to make newcomers or new viewers to be more comfortable, uh, to feel more comfortable, I should say, um, on his streams. So let's attack that first. Uh, one, the comf to be more comfortable? I No, that sounds like a cult. To be honest with you, like some children of the corn shit. And if that's his way of killing people with kindness to kind of start the early process of indoctrination, it's not going to work because eventually people are going to break rank, uh, break ranks. As current, I think Seidel is the only one kind of spitting the racist, uh, the racist propaganda over there. But I'm sure he's not the only Joseph Goebbels in the situation. So eventually, that's going to turn that that's going to turn people off eventually, because people will sit there and kind of tolerate it for so long, and then they'll just be like, you know, whatever. And also, as people get banned over m more and more silly shit, inconsequential type shit, people are just going to get turned off and be like, why the hell am I wasting my time with this? There's more entertaining people. Then there's Phil himself. Phil is not entertaining. Uh, Dave has a has a pension to kind of just be lazy. With that being said, um, I had looked at a couple of my comments before I actually started uh, this recording. The Dave, me calling Phil Dave is a meme. I personally give credit to uh, to Almighty Tevin, praise be Almighty, uh, for it. But how it started, if I remember the lore, is someone came into Phil's stream and was calling him Dave and Phil was like, I'm not, my name's not Dave. And I guess it just kind of spun out of control from there and led to, went from Dave to Dave Bennett. So that's the reason why I use it. It's hilarious. And since his reality is perpetually failure, I, I, I just, to be honest with you, I'm just helping him out. <laughs> so that's why I call him Dave. But Dave, DSP, Dark Side Phil, DSP Gaming, they're all the same person, to be honest. It's four idiots trapped in one gout-ridden body. So, just wanted to clear that up. Uh, as it pertains to Phil, and uh, and now the, this whole situation with ad revenue. Uh, sorry, I'm a little rusty. As it pertains to his ad revenue, it's no different than what I've told you guys a few, well, a couple of broadcasts back. In the fact that he's a creature of habit. So, eventually, he was going to revert back to going to these 10 minute videos because that's what he wants now i don't know enough at current we're going to kind of go through this together on what's prompting him to do it but if i had to guess uh looking at his channel briefly before i was able to get into this his views are not necessarily up but his subs are up i think he's he had like 512 520 subs last month or this month if you won't well, last month sorry in august 
and um, and I would assume his viewership or at least his uh, retentions up, the the amount of watch time for his videos are up, being that his videos are longer. Um, it's my understanding though that Phil is under this interesting view that because he has six video or six ads rolling in his video, he should be getting the same amount of money if he was rolling six vid separate videos with each having one ad. And obviously it wouldn't work that way. And then recently he came out with the whole pesky ad block. Um, people are starting to forget, please don't forget, that this, may, this man, and I use that term loosely, made $10,000 in July, which he's waiting to get because there's like a two month layover. He also was donated a bunch of games and or money for a bunch of games, I should say. He's gotten some big tips and some big donations. He's not hurting. You know what I mean? He's not hurting at all. He's just greedy. Now, granted, I will admit that he did take a hit at the end of July leading into the beginning of August. But as it pertains to him being demonetized and he was able to get that back, I don't know, like maybe eight or nine days before I called that he would. I said myself and G Money said he'd probably have it back by the 20th, which would have been a month from July 20th when it was taken away from him. He actually got it back, like, like I said, about maybe 10 days before, maybe eight days before, something along those lines. So yes, he did take a hit in those, you know, seven or eight days. One of the problems with that though, is he's always perpetuated the lie that he makes more money on his old stuff than he does on his new stuff. If that's the case, as I said a couple broadcasts ago, why wouldn't he just leave all of his new playthroughs on KO Gaming? He's completely abandoned KO, uh, KO Gaming. So why don't you just leave it there and then just let your uh, let DSP Gaming kind of just lick its wounds and build itself back up. But the moment that he was able to get ads uh, reactivated back on it, he immediately started flushing everything over there. Now granted, it wasn't at the volume that it once was, but that's immediately what he did. So that meant KO Gaming was really just a means to an end. It didn't mean anything. It still doesn't. And which is sad because he was building a bit of a following over there for a little while, briefly. Um, which is also funny for someone who says that YouTube is just an archive to now it's an ama it's a, it's you know a big part of his revenue, which it is. To you guys really need to help me out, or I won't put videos over there anymore. You, you guys, you guys all remember that, right? When he tried to hold DSP Game hostage, uh, DSP Gaming hostage, I should say. And I would assume he's going to perpetuate the same bullshit here. He's just going to do it in a different way. And yet again, this leads to the separation of Northern and Southern Gautopia. Because Northern Gautopia obviously is Twitch, where all the big money is being spent and all of the, and all of the hug, hug box type uh, behavior is happening. Whereas YouTube, you guys need to step up. You guys have been living high off the hog for a little while, and it's time for you guys to pay the toll. It's time for you guys to pay the do your dues. It's time for you guys to pay your tithes, if you will, to your Lord and Savior, the doubt, the snout, and the gout. Praise be. This is going to fail. I don't know exactly where this is going to go yet. We're, we'll watch and we'll see how it works out, but this is going to fail. It's going to fail miserably, because yet again, this is... This is him chasing short-term money instead of thinking about the long-term. He's not dumb enough to not understand how the long-term is going to work out. He just doesn't want to wait. He's not willing to do that. He feels that 10 years or whatever his bullshit little legacy is was enough time. It's time to cash out. The problem is if he made the changes that he needed to, oh, five, six years ago, he might have been in a better position to do so, but he didn't. And in turn, that leads him to where he is now. Now, the people who want to continue giving him money over there, keep him propped up, it is what it is. The fan base isn't growing anymore. Yes, he has more subs on his DSP Gaming channel because most, I would assume, most of them decided to migrate back after he went to the longer videos and their spam boxes aren't getting hit. They'll tolerate him for, you know, a little while. They'll entertain him. They'll humor him for a little while. But Phil wants that ad revenue. He doesn't care about the length of the video per se. He just wants the ad revenue. And that's what will end up getting him. And then he'll make another excuse for that. He's blaming YouTube currently for screwing him over while throwing the uh, throwing out the hints 
that it's because of the changes that he made and the people who asked him to make these changes that it's your guy's fault that he's starting to fail. It'll only be a matter of time until he fully comes out and blames the fan base, the pig roach cult, or whatever you want to call them in general. It's it's what he does. In any case, um, let's go ahead and get into the video. Like I said, um, this is going to be kind of rusty. It's been a, a while since I've been behind the mic. It's been about a week, which is actually a really long time for me. But um, for everybody who chose to stick around, or even if you didn't stick around and you uns unsubbed or whatever the case may be, but you decided to come back because you saw the video was up, I, I appreciate it and whatnot. Um, there are plenty of other uh, uh, content creators, detractors out there who upload way more consistently. So I don't hold it against anybody for not wanting to stick around. It, it's in the motto that I'm going to be late about stuff. So no ill will to anybody for that. Uh, you got to do what you got to do, to be honest with you. <laughs> and I'm not worth waiting on, to be honest. So, um, but for those who did choose the wait and whatnot, I very much appreciate it. In any case, let's go ahead and uh, get back on the horse. Um, <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, let's go ahead and get back to it. Speaking of which, uh, before we go ahead and get into this broadcast, Eminem, Kamikaze, fire. Okay? Fire. That's all I got to say. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG in conjunction with <laughs> Galtopia News Network. I'm going to have to work out how that tagline is going to work. You guys all know the slogan, though. Yeah. Kamikaze is great. It's time to watch me work. Oh, boy. It's, it's been a while. It should be fun, though. So, guys. As you guys know, I've been having some pretty interesting... Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Mr. Huff Stuffs. Dark Side Phil. YouTube ad investigation. Let's go. Challenges with YouTube. And you may be wondering what I mean by that. What I mean by that is, as you guys know, I lost all advertisement revenue on YouTube in July. It finally came back sometime this month in August, but... You know, I lost a lot of money there. And then when I came back, I decided to make longer videos on YouTube. This is what people have always asked for over the years. And I finally decided to do it. But since I've done it, I'm not even exaggerating. My ad revenue on YouTube has been halved. I'm making half as much money on YouTube as I used to. Okay. Now, overall, the overwhelming feedback I've been getting from viewers is this is a positive. We love the longer video. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why he's making, in his words, half is one, he's not part of the MCN anymore. And two, he had like a three, I don't know, like three weeks? It was, he had a, a layoff of, for about three weeks. So of course he's going to take a hit. You know what I mean? But he can't make it, he can't make his circumstances seem as dire as they are because the videos are longer. That's, that's just flat and plain out dishonest, to be honest with you. But that is the ways of gout. Broke Jedi uh, mind tricks, if you will. So, let's continue. You only upload a small handful of videos a day. It allows us to subscribe to the channel and not have our inboxes flooded. In fact, on average, guys, just listen to these stats, how good these are, okay? My, my subscriptions on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, have gone up every single day since I instituted the change to make longer videos. Every day I've gained subs. That has not happened in five years. That's not even an exaggeration. I have not had a consistent sub growth in five years on DSP Gaming. Now I'm actually getting it. it the way I see it, if I keep doing this, I may actually finally beat 200,000 subs. I may actually cap 200,000 subscribers on DSP Gaming in the next few months to year if I keep doing it the way I'm doing it. That's pretty crazy, right? Now here's the, here's the, the interesting part, I should say. I was going to say funny, but it's really more interesting than anything. If he had done what people asked him to do five or six years ago, where could have Phil been now? Where could, what would Dave's sub count if, since that's something that he hangs his hat on, where would, it, where could it, could it have been, you know, five years ago? You know, like I would have, most people have, uh, at least people that I've talked to, said that he could have been at half a million subscribers. Now, for me, that's kind of, Ridiculous. I wouldn't say it's preposterous, but it's kind of ridiculous to think he'd be at half a million. But I, I don't want to give him that much credit. Um, he doesn't deserve that much credit, and he certainly hasn't done anything to earn it. 
So I I'd give him three hundred and fifty at at best. He would have been at three hundred and fifty thousand subscribers, not half a million. I just I'm sorry, he's not entertaining enough. And keep in mind, if he was at you know you know let's say he did make to three hundred fifty thousand subscribers, he'd be a bigger target than Wings. Not granted, Wings is a big target, but um he would have he would have been a, a much bigger target than Wings, and whatnot. He would be he'd be screwed um, if he hits that number. If he hits two hundred thousand subscribers, he's gonna be screwed because it's just gonna give people more incentive to go after him. To be honest, the trolls, I mean, it'll, it'll just give them more reason to go and mess with him. And if it works any, if it works out in any way like Monday Matt, it won't because <laughs> Phil isn't gonna pay for subs. <laughs> um, if he hits two hundred thousand subscribers and then he loses it a week or two later, watch him go ahead and bitch and complain about that. Watch him say that it was the detractor's fault. Watch him sit there and throw uh, sneak disses and jabs at his own fan base for not supporting him and spreading the word about, uh, you know, how DSP Gaming has changed and how he's not like that anymore and how he's different, like a boyfriend who beat, beats every girlfriend that he's with and then swears to God that he's better. Um, kind of like that. And... That in itself, that analogy, is actually kind of befitting when you look at how he treats his fan base. It's basically battered girlfriend syndrome in a lot of ways. He just abuses them over and over and over again, and they just kind of keep coming back. And it's kind of amazing in a lot of ways. It's kind of astounding, especially when you get a chance to talk to people who were kind of entrenched in uh, in Phil's content. They weren't nearly as vocal as a... Uh, Brightside Viking or Sidella or any of these guys, but they were people who were invested in, in him. And when they step away, they still they still want to cheer for him, even though the abuse that they walked away from, even though the abuse that they walked away from, they would almost be willing to endure it again just to see him do well. And I find that to be fascinating in some cases. But uh, you know, what are you gonna do? Number two, my engagement on the channel is way up. What I mean by that is the average length of that someone watches a video, I'm not, again, not exaggerating, it has doubled in the last month. So in the last month, the average you know, time that someone watches a video is twice as much as it used to be. That's a good stat. That actually makes a channel healthy in the eyes of YouTube. And people but have been- what he wants out of that is, at least what that tells him is that, oh, well, then they're more than likely to watch more ads throughout the video, if I had to guess. Yet again, it comes back to pure greed. To be honest with you, even the whole 200,000 subscribers, even if he was willing to stay on the course to get that, he doesn't care. Because yet again, it's all in the short term. All he wants is the, his short term gains. And it's kind of the marks of a quitter in a lot of ways. Um, even though if you looked at Phil and, and if you associated quitting with Phil, it really comes down to, oh, the guy quits games. But it's not just that. He's quit aspects of life, too. He's quit generally going out and associating with people, meaning meeting people face-to-face. -face. If you have to, if you re resorted to emailing your your neighbors, there's something wrong. There's, there's, a, some, there's something a little bit off about you. He's very much a shut-in, for the most part, who leaves only in the most dire situations or if cats with him. And I guarantee you, that's merely a shield. You know what I mean? That's a, It's a curtain, if you will. Nothing else. It's kind of sad and very pathetic. Um, so the, the 200,000 subscribers doesn't mean shit. The actual growth of the channel itself and the fact of the positivity and people, you know, speaking well about Dave, at least at current, doesn't mean shit. It's about the finances. If he can't financially benefit, he doesn't care. Everything else is more about, is more sentimental. And if you're a sociopath, being sentimental doesn't mean shit. There's no feelings in all this. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wouldn't call him a robot because a robot's driven. He's not necessarily driven, but you could say he does have a drive for money. I hope that's not, con that's not uh, contradicting. It might be. <laughs> Let's continue. Telling me this as well. 
Um, if you now search for DSP Gaming on YouTube, my channel actually comes up first, which didn't used to happen. If you search for DSP Gaming, it used to be a million detractor videos, and then DSP Gaming would be, like, halfway down the fucking page. Now, if you actually search for DSP Gaming, the channel shows up first, so you can actually access the content before you watch all the negative videos about it, okay? <laughs> so, all that this last long. stuff is a positive, all right? All this stuff is a great positive. However, however, guys, there's a big negative. And like I said, the negative is ad revenue is way down. Now, you know, I'm operating a business. I need to make a certain amount of money to pay my bills. And I'll be honest with you guys. I've been leaning on you guys on Twitch to help me to make up for this situation with YouTube. I've been asking you guys to tip me and everything. And I, I do need your help in that regard. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But the bottom line is my YouTube presence has become half as profitable because I made these supposedly positive changes, all right? <clears throat> now, if you think about it logically or statistically, it should not make sense, all right? It should, I mean, it should, this doesn't make sense. You're, make, you're putting out the same amount of content. In fact, it, let's say, for example, I now put out a, a one-hour video. Well, that's 60 minutes. What I used to do is I used to put out six videos that were 10 minutes therefore there would be six advertisements people would watch and i'd make that amount of money well now i'm putting out a 60 minute video with six advertisements placed throughout the video so statistically you would think well if someone just watches the video you should make the same amount of money right well guess what i did some research on my own last night and i i actually found out the reason why making longer videos screws people over on youtube and why my ad revenue is plummeted. I figured it out for myself. And here's why. Here you go, guys. You ready? Because this is kind of a revelation for me. And now it's kind of shocking that I'm realizing this is the reason. Well, someone rubbed that pig's belly because he was able to do, I don't know, five minutes worth of research off Google about his business for once. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, this is the same pig that couldn't do another five or ten minutes of research on the state that he moved to if it had any type of income or income tax or state income tax as it pertains to a business. And the thing is, is I still hold to the theory that he knew about it and he had to, because how was it that Panda, who only was making a couple hundred bucks a year, and that's at best, um, I don't even know if she was breaking even as it pertains to the supplies or whatnot. I don't know. But in any case, if she had to go ahead and register herself as a business, and she's making a couple hundred bucks a year, how is it that this idiot, who's making six figures, didn't think he had to? It's tax evasion. That's exactly what it was. And he's probably lucky that he didn't get hit with um, a much more stiffer penalty than what he did. But yet again, ladies and gentlemen, he, he did some research all on his own, all by himself, like a good boy. So, he wants you to rub his belly over that. You might need to go ahead and throw some bits at him for that one before he gets into this explanation that just makes him, if I had to guess, sound greedy. Let's continue. Okay. okay. Here's why. It's because, ladies and gentlemen, when you watch videos on YouTube, you can watch them in various different ways. You can either watch on a PC, right? A laptop or desktop computer. You could watch it on your phone. Now, when you watch it on your phone, there's different ways you could watch it. If you're just watching it through a browser, you're probably watching the desktop version. If you're watching through an app, like the YouTube app or a Firefox browser app, you're watching the mobile version of YouTube, which is actually different, okay? Um, when you're watching YouTube through various other pieces of equipment, like a PlayStation, an Xbox, your television, all these things have their own separate apps that you can download and watch YouTube videos through. And all of those also have completely different versions of YouTube that you're watching. All right. So I did some perspective and here's what I found out. I did, I did some, not perspective, I did some comparison. So last night, I was streaming, and I streamed Fire Pro Wrestling World, and I did fantasy simulation matches, where it was cartoonish characters beating the crap out of each other and, like, death matches and stuff, all right? I wanted to watch this back again last night, because I thought it particularly was pretty funny, and I wanted to see if, watching it a second time, if I could actually make more, make more uh, order of it, because it was so chaotic during the live stream, I didn't even get to see, like, half the action going on in the ring. And it was actually funny, because I watched it again last night, and I saw people doing moves to each other and everything that I had missed the first time when I was doing the commentary, because it was just so much happening at once, all right? So, I'm watching this back. 
Now, this is a video that's 40 minutes long. It should have had four ads on it, but I was watching it in the Firefox uh, app on my television. I have a Samsung Smart Type TV, and it has an app built in to watch, well, I've downloaded it, actually, to watch Firefox, you know, watch the internet. So I'm watching it, and only one advertisement played at the very beginning of the video, and once that was done, not once during the entire 45-minute video did I see another ad. Now, the thing is, I personally last night placed advertisements on this video at 10 minute intervals so if youtube actually fucking worked there should have been four advertisements playing on that video and it should have been credit for four ads but i only saw one at the beginning of the video okay <laughs> so after that i said well wait a minute i gotta compare here all right um let me go to my phone so i actually have an iphone okay and I said, I'm going to play this video back in my browser on my phone and see what happens. So I did, and I saw two advertisements, okay? Then I went on my desktop PC, and I watched the video, and I saw all four advertisements that I had placed, okay? So you see what I'm saying? Uh, wh what I'm seeing here, basically, is that YouTube, even in 2018, right, is still not a website that fucking works the way that it's supposed to. YouTube, if it worked, what would happen is no matter where you watch the video, how you watch it, you would see the advertisements four times, four ads per video, right? Um, if it was a 40 minute video, basically 10, every 10 minutes an ad plays. But that's not what happens. Some people see one, some people see two, some people see four, okay? So in essence, here's what's going on, okay? People are watching my videos through various means, and everyone's basically at least seeing one ad usually, but not everyone is seeing all the ads. So to give you some perspective, that same Fire Pro Wrestling uh, video, if I had made it four videos of 10 minutes each, everyone would have watched four advertisements because it automatically plays an ad at the beginning of the video. Okay, so I would have got credit for four ads no matter who watched it on what venue. But because Let me cut in for a minute. So first things first, I'm going to read you just a few notes that I'm just kind of kind of you know, bunch together real quick from G Money, who kind of, like I said, who reached out to me early on about this. Um, first things first, did this man just admit to watching his own videos for ads? Two, did he admit to watching one video that was 40 minutes long over the span of three medians? So he gave up two hours, basically, watching his own videos to click his own ads? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to be so unrealistic to think that that's what happened that he was just sitting there and watching all of his videos all the way through just for the ads it seems not to say that he didn't do it or he couldn't have done it but i don't think that's actually the case because uh especially if you're watching his videos on a mobile which he's bullshitting about that i'll get into g money's explanation about that in a minute um you see the little markers that kind of tell you when an ad's coming up uh, if you're watching it on a console or something you don't actually get that prompt the ad just kind of comes up and then obviously on PC, you'll see that. Um, so at best, he sat there and watched a 40 minute video three times to click all of his ads and then got butt hurt because in the, on each median, all the ads didn't pop up, which is that how desperate he is at this point that you're watching your own videos just so you can get what little ad revenue that's coming to you. All right. So first things first, um, Let's see, first off, uh, this is G Money talking to me. First off, uh, he's lying about his ads appearing on mobile and TV. He's And G Money's right about that because I actually tested it myself. His ads did come up. Uh, let's see, uh, G Money checked his own videos to as well as Dave's to prove this. So that's complete horseshit, but we all know that because Phil's a liar. Second, his ad revenue was low because it was August. And that isn't unusual for ad revenue in August to be low. Um, in fact, uh, in fact, in August, August is one of two months where ad revenue is typically going to be typically going to be low. Like I guess that's something that happens uh, annually. He said it's August, and then it's uh, da -da 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 -da, and then he said it's January. Those are the two months that where ad revenue will always be at its lowest. It also says here because of. Because of the daily impressions from the RPMs, it goes from 2.3 daily and dropped down to 1.7 in the month of August. Jesus Christ, that's low. 
That's really, really low. So the value basically dropped. Oh, okay, that's kind of good to know. Um, I'm really going to need to get him on here so he can explain that further. Jesus Christ, that sucks. And he says that that's something that happens. He's talked to other content creators on a regular basis who he's friends with, and they've all said the exact same thing across the board. Uh, let's see here. And there are other, obviously, there are other factors. There are other variables that can that can come across. But one of the main things is, as I said early on in this broadcast, is it, he, he was only out of the loop for about three weeks or so. So there's even though the ads are going to be low, and he knows that, Phil knows that. He knows that because I'm sure he's told us before. I don't know if he said, if he has said, because uh, I know he says in the summer before the hardcore gaming season, as he likes to call it, and we all know we're getting ready to go into that. I don't know if he has said January before. Um, I think he, Phil might have actually had said February, but you know, Phil, he might have gotten it all mixed up. So it is what it is. And I, I take G Money's word over him. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, cool. So there's the basic cut and dry of it. Uh, Phil's lying about how his ads appear on television and mobile, which, you know, is not too preposterous. Um, also, I would think because you're going going right to your right to your web browser and then going through your app, since you're kind of taking a different path to going into the same website. Whereas like if you were taking the app if you're using the app, it's like a shortcut. Whereas if you're going through the web browser, you kind of have to go through the, the web and flow. There could be some type of effect to it, but like I said, I can ask G Money that later and we can get more of an explanation. Uh, Phil's just silly. But that whole thing about him sitting there and watching his video three times to see if ad revenue came up is is sad. Especially when he has two grand coming out. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't I have to I have to reiterate this. He has two thousand plus dollars from one individual coming to him in July. N or coming into him from July, I should say, on top of whatever money he made in that two month, uh, in that two month grace period, he's not hurting. If anything else, whatever he lost on DSP Gaming, and I'm trying to be optimistic about this, but whatever money that he lost, he's probably going to make up off Twitch, and I guarantee you he knows that. But he's so greedy, he wants it all. He wants it all. And that's what's going to end up being his demise. Or it's going to be one of the factors, I should, should say, to his demise. And if you're in Phil's fan base, you have to wonder when's enough going to be enough. Because eventually everybody has their breaking point, right? So this man, and like I said, I use that term loosely, crying and complaining about something that happened to him, whether it was in his control or not, is kind of irrelevant at this point. What has happened has happened. To sit there and still perpetuate his bullshit, despite the fact that he's getting all of this support, if you will, on Twitch, is insane. It's insane. After a while, you have to just be grateful for what you have. But that's, that requires common sense, and there's not a lot of that over there. DSP News. I made a 40-minute video. Some people only watched one ad, some watched two, and some watched all four. So in essence, for the same content that I used to put out, I'm now making way less money because YouTube doesn't fucking play the ads properly on all these different versions of the site. Okay, so that's the, that's the actual truth of the matter. Even though longer videos will get you more engagement on YouTube, they'll put your, your channel in better search rankings, you'll probably get more overall subscriptions and, and followers, and maybe over time, viewership will grow because people will, will subscribe and watch more because they're not uh, annoyed by a ton of smaller videos. Overall, your advertisement revenue is way lower because YouTube doesn't fucking play the ads properly on other things other than just the desktop version of the site. So that's what happened. So, so in conclusion, uh, we're going to continue with the video, but in conclusion, for the most part, despite all the positives that are coming about that can, that can definitely give him, um, it can give him, it's, it's setting him up for a much stronger foundation moving forward, excuse me, moving forward, he would, he would negate all of that. He would give all of that up just for some little ad revenue over the span of three weeks. I want you to think about that. In the long term, meaning in the next, like, let's say between now and the end of the year, is he going to make 
uh, is he going to make it to the 200,000 mark, staying the path that he is with the longer videos by the end of the year? I don't think so. Uh, maybe sometime next year, in 2019? He, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to step out of myself for a minute and be objective. He, maybe. Maybe. Um, I guess it depends on how raw people want it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wear protection. In any case, uh, I guess that I guess that depends. <clears throat> but in any case, he he could he has an opportunity yet again, as he did with Ko Gaming, to lay down a much stronger foundation on what was the uh, sand dooms that he had, which was for, which was Galtopia. He has a chance to kind of build a new Gautopia with a much stronger and much more reliable um, uh, groundwork. You know what I mean? With foreground, if you will. He has the opportunity to do that, and he won't do it. Because the money, what little money he's chasing, means just so much more. Despite the fact, ladies and gentlemen, he's being reimbursed for that and some on Twitch. But he doesn't care. Because he wants what he felt that's coming to him, and then Twitch is something different. And Patreon is something different. And Teespring is something different. So, do you see how this kind of works? I've talked about this before. <clears throat> Where certain medians will be doing will be doing fine, will be doing all right. Certain outlets are working out in his favor, but if this one outlet is underperforming, if you will, then he wants all focus to be put over there. And then the guilt trip on, hey guys, I have great merchandise over here at Teespring. Why don't you, you know, why aren't anybody buying? You know what I'm saying? I haven't had a sale in a while. Please do that. And he'll pump that out for about a week or so. Or if Patreon's low, hey guys, I have great perks. And you guys, it, it, it's, you guys have the power to influence, you know, this holiday event and this right here and that right here. Actually, I think one of the new things is uh, his soon to be holiday, of Halloween event. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, you have, you know, you have power over here. You have influence through Patreon. So, you know, please support. I need you guys support. Patreon means a lot to me. It helps me with my bills. It helps me with my day-to-day -day operations for this business that AKA really isn't a business. His words, not mine. Um, and all of the, and everything that that entails. This is just kind of what he does. He just shifts the, he just kind of shifts the focus wherever he needs it to be. And this is no different. Twitch itself, hands down, is carrying the day. And it probably has been for a while. And so, but his new scheme, the, the new scam, is to, the, the new bacon grease, if you will, is to, he knows he's going to take that hit on YouTube. So, everybody who shows up to Twitch, give me your money, give me your money, give me your money. For everybody else, though, you guys, you guys need to just try harder on YouTube. You have to somehow bring that money up, because I need that to pay my bills. Even though he's he's trying to push that ten thousand dollar narrative each month on, each month on Twitch, and he's probably getting close to hitting it, probably. Just my opinion, of course. DSP news. That's what happened. Um, and I'm like, I can't believe. Like, after doing this comparison last night, I was like, can you believe that YouTube in 2018 is still this fucked? Like they never figured this out. And I, I actually remember it was around 2012 when basically YouTube kind of came out and said, well, just so you know, guys, more people are watching videos on mobile now than ever. So we're changing channels. So the channels will now look better on phones. And we're doing all these things to adjust for mobile versions so you guys can keep making money. And I remember working with Machinima at that time because Machinima even said, you know, you guys are probably going to end up making less money over time because everything's going mobile and YouTube hasn't adjusted to the times. That was five, excuse me, that was six years ago. In six fucking years, YouTube has not figured out how to properly run advertisements on mobile devices. Six and years. you haven't actually properly figured out how to run a YouTube channel. Successfully. I mean, given the amount of time that uh, that it took you to transition from camcorder or guerrilla tactics, if you will, to direct capture, to go, you're just now going to longer videos, which people have been asking for that forever. You know what I mean? You're talking about this whole interactive streaming type thing. That doesn't mean shit because it's garbage at best. And it's funny because it goes against his own moral code when he said that, oh, when I'm streaming, I don't want to mess up the experience for people on YouTube when in truth, that's all it is. Because he doesn't edit. 
because editing doesn't mean shit compared to actually being on stream and doing everything off the cuff and whatnot. That's so much harder than actually sitting there and editing a video. At least his words, not mine. So yet again, it's very funny how his memory is so long on the mistakes that other people make, other businesses make. But when it comes to him, it's not my fault. I did nothing wrong. It was everybody else. I did everything the way I was supposed to, everything the way I told. I never made any mistake or any misstep or anything of the sort. It was everybody else's fault, not mine. And he's been pushing that narrative essentially his whole life. But everybody else is wrong, right? Nothing he could do. What the fuck? What the fuck were they doing for six fucking years? What, did they have their thumbs up their asses? Like, this would be like the priority one. Everyone is watching our videos now on other formats, so advertisement revenue is going to drop dramatically unless we fix this. Oh, we just won't do it. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, huh? So, obviously, this is annoying, and this is very worrying for me. Because as you guys know, as I've told you, YouTube is still a significant part of my income. Um, it looks like now, as long as I'm going to continue to make longer videos, it's going to be less, a, a, a big lesser chunk of my income because I, I, unless I go back to the shorter videos, I don't think I could ever make as much money as I used to on YouTube. Unless, unless let's say over the course of this hardcore, but without game, an MCN, he's going to make less money regardless. You know what I mean? At least for a while until he can, un, un, until his channel itself gets the chance to grow. You know what I mean? If, if you got to understand, like, I don't want to say that being with an, MC, an MCN stifles an individual. Um, I, I don't want to say that, but it might make some content creators complacent and whatnot. It might make the channel itself a bit complacent until it, they have to go back on their own personal um, AdSense account. And then, you're, you, then it's really just you and your channel against all odds. And you have to build a strong foundation uh, to continue to move forward. At least that's my general guess. <laughs> that's just my guess on it. And Phil doesn't want to do that. Phil Phil believes he's above that. And that's unnecessary. And it's troublesome, if you will. It's a waste of time. He's already put all of his time in. He's the most prolific YouTuber out there. Um, he doesn't have to go through the hoops again, if, the, if, if you will. You know what I'm saying? This isn't boot camp. You know what I mean? He's already done all that. So, it is what it is. ...season, because I'm making shorter videos, or excuse me, longer videos now, a lot more people maybe check out my stuff. People who maybe usually would watch only during the hardcore gaming season and come in naturally to subscribe, maybe now they'll stay and keep watching the content next year because now I'm making longer videos and I don't flood their inboxes. And then maybe naturally the revenue will grow back to at least where it was. I don't know. I mean, there's potential, but it's not guaranteed. And it certainly is disheartening for me, okay, <clears throat> to look at this and basically say, what That's the That's funny, though, because 10 years, he just laid out the parameters of what more than likely will happen, but he don't know. He doesn't understand. But yet, he goes on Twitch, and, you know what I'm saying, he's the one who sets the rules. He's the one who's, who made the guidelines, and he knows exactly what he's doing, and no one can tell him anything different. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Like, I did nothing. I didn't change my content. I didn't piss off my viewers, you know. I'm doing actually what the viewers want and have always asked for. And YouTube, all of their metrics are telling me your channel's doing better. You're getting more subs. You know, your engagement has doubled. Everything is looking good on your channel. Oh, by the way, make half as much money now. Because we suck on our end and we don't know how to fucking do our own business properly and put ads on your videos like they're supposed to be. You know, it's like, what the fuck? What the fuck is, it's, it hasn't even been a month yet. Like, give it time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're 36 years old. You're not getting any younger. So, at this point, you might as well wait. But that's something that Phil can never do. Dave never learned how to be patient. He never learned how to wait. He looked at as uh, he looked at it as an insult if he has to wait on anything. But you didn't mind waiting on Panda when she was sick with the flu. Hey, wait a second, guys. I have to go and wake Panda up. She's sick, but I need her to make dinner. Give me a second. I'll be right back. You didn't mind being waited on then? 
right? You didn't mind having to wait during that situation. You don't mind waiting for Cat to get home to go ahead and make yourself a home cooked meal or whatever store bought or whatever mail order meal that comes your way. And let's be honest, there are people who are who are watching Phil's money as best they can. And the numbers don't lie. He can lie all he wants, but the numbers generally don't lie. I just, you know, it's just so frustrating. All right. And I just want to share this with you guys because, you know, again, I'm the only person probably figuring all this shit out. You know, most people just go with the flow and they're like, well, you know, well, less money, whatever. And then they complain. And, but me, I, I, I did now, actually did. Yet again, another stupid comment by Phil. Um, <laughs> out of the millions and millions of people on YouTube who are, who, you know, are paid by YouTube, whether they, because it's their job or their hobby, just who collect the check, no matter how large or how small it is. I'm the only one, meaning Dave, is the only one who's actually looked into the metric. He's the only one who's done the footwork. He's the only one who sat down and went and did the hard research to find out how this works out. Though, in general, depending on what, what your your genre is, long there are always going to be creators who are going to do long videos. And people will love them. And they'll keep coming back to watch them. And more people will come in to do it. But yet, oh, no, 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 That's it, it doesn't work on YouTube. It, it doesn't work at all. It, it just doesn't make sense. But then he wants to shit on people who make sh shorter videos that have the really cool edits, the nice transitions and things of that sort, saying that, oh, that high production is bullshit. It doesn't, it just, it, it doesn't add to the experience at all. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving you guys the raw, you know what I'm saying, gamer experience. Everything else is just fabricated bullshit. He can't have his cake and eat it too. He can't bash this way of doing it and bash that way of doing it and then champion his own way f of going about it, knowing, knowing that it's failing. In his eyes, it's not failing or he won't ever admit that it's failing because he doesn't want to ever admit that he's a failure. He doesn't want to admit that 10 years of his life was wasted on YouTube and he's only making enough to get by. You know, if, well, that's the lore, I should say. That's, that's the Gautopian lore, I should say. In real life, he's probably doing all right. He's doing, as John and Howard once said, for him to make it as far as he did doing what he does is something that it should be commended. Not by me, though. At the end of the day, it was still lazy bullshit. And so he's going to keep getting criticized by it. If not by me, it'll be by somebody else. It already is. At the end of the day. And eventually it will fail. Eventually, he will crash and burn. Eventually, one of you guys are going to ride through Seattle or Connecticut or wherever the hell he let, he ends up at. And he's going to be at one of those places, either pushing your groceries or pumping your gas. It's his end game. Or mopping your floors. It is what it is. And he knows it. And he's scared of it. And he's scared of it. And though he has the type of opportunities... To, to try to forego that and put himself back into the workforce at entry level and just in, and work his way up to at least a respectable, a respectable position. He won't do it. Since when did DSP, Dark Side Phil, Phil Burnell become too damn good for a paying job? To go out there and put in a little bit of hard work, or a little bit of work in general, and maybe, maybe, develop some character. Hmm? Because video games obviously didn't do that, at least not for him. It made him a piece of shit, which is what he is. He's always been a piece of shit, personally. He's always been a piece of shit. But it just made him into a much, a much larger piece of shit. And, and he's, he's, his, he's his own personal landfill, with an orbit. That's all he is. That's all he'll ever be. But yet, somewhere down the line, he got in his head that you guys owe him. That he's important enough that you should pay him to do what he does. Hmm. Already. The <laughs> research to find all this shit out, you know? Huh. <laughs> 
So all that being said, here's the deal. We're heading into the fall gaming season, everybody. Okay? And, and undoubtedly, what we're going to see is we're going to see an increase in viewers, especially when I'm playing new hot games. You're going to see an increase in viewers. People are going to be coming by to hang out and watch the new stuff like Spider-Man and the like. People are going to be hyped for it. Okay? On YouTube, probably there will be an increase in viewership as well. But this is kind of what's what's the artificial increase that we see at the end of every year. And it's great, and I love it because it helps me out tremendously. But my goal is to retain the people who come by for the fall. New Newcomers come by. I want people to make them feel welcome and happy here. Even though there are tons of regulars who I see in the stream chat every day. All right. Uh, I, was, I want people to come by and be able to feel like they can hang out and be chill with me, enjoy games with me, have some interaction with me, and you guys. I want everyone to have a fun time. So I'm going to need your guys' help, too. You guys are the regulars who are here all the time, right? You're the guys who, no matter what game I'm playing, you guys come by and hang out with me, and I appreciate that. But what I need from you guys is basically um, a lot of, 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 how can I say, make newcomers feel welcome, Okay. Please okay, do whatever. Stop for a minute there. He couldn't even he couldn't even get it out. Like he couldn't get it out that hey guys, make people feel welcome. I want you guys to perpetuate an environment that people can feel comfortable with, that people want to be here, they want to contribute, and I mean contribute not financially. They just want to kind of come in and have a nice place to chill that this right here can actually grow and prosper in another way that isn't financial. And if you're a DSP regular, you got to feel some way about that. You have to feel some way about the fact that, all right, guys, I know you guys are regulars, and I know you guys are here a lot, and this, that, and a third, and whatever, whatever. Fuck that. I need new blood. I need new blood. Okay? You guys, you guys got your, you guys, you know, got your syphilis and all this, that, and a third, and I've dealt with that long enough. But I need some fresh blood in here. I need something to revitalize me. I need a whole new group of innocent people that you guys need to bring, that, are gonna eventually come in here. And I need to keep, I need you guys to keep him here or keep them here, I should say. In a lot of ways to, um, some people were talking about, uh, Snorpernell lately has been using like actual footage of like cats and pigs or cats and horses. I hear it's hilarious. But in the last one, I caught a quick glimpse of it where this pig was coming around this bend to cut this horse off and was kind of corralling it back into wherever it was supposed to be at, uh, I assume. It's kind of like that. It's like, hey guys, I want you to build a wall of kindness and force people to stay here. So, for example, if new people come in, and this is something that he already does, and you know how they give they give gifted subs a lot, you know, artificial inflate, um, inflatement. Sorry, can't get the word out. Um, they're artificially inflating his numbers. Go ahead and if you guys see somebody in here that's new who isn't trolling right away, go ahead and give them a sub. Go ahead and give them a gifted sub tell them, and make them feel welcome. Make them feel like this is a great place to, uh, to hang out. Try to start a conversation with them, this, that, and the third. Here's the problem with something like that. It's intrusive. It's one of these type of situations where if I jump into a stream, I kind of just want to see what's going on with it. And I might give the stream 15, 20 minutes to see what's being said. And if it's nothing that I'm feeling, then I'll just move on my way. What I don't need is people watching the feed to see who's popped in or whatnot. And then immediately start bombarding me with bullshit. Like, hey, 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 how are you doing, man? How did you find out about this place? Hey, man, this is a great place. He's getting ready to play this game. Just, you know, these are some of the rules. Just, you know, just chill out and hang out. And then try to give me bullshit conversation. I don't necessarily need that. If you want to engage, you will. You know what I mean? That's, that seems obvious. It's almost human nature in a lot of ways, especially if the chat seems like something you can interact with. But don't sit there and, 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 and spam, that's the word I'm looking for, spam new people with, with bullshit kindness to keep them there. It's not going to work. Eventually, people will see through it. But that's what Phil wants. Because, yet again, you guys who are regulars, uh, you guys aren't going to go nowhere until I ban you. So I need new blood. We need to replenish the ranks. I haven't found my bright side Viking yet. And he hasn't, by the way. He hasn't found that guy who's going to front line for him, who's going to regulate and essentially be the head of the Gestapo, and, and give the big money on month after month after month. 
He hasn't found that yet. He really hasn't. And most people think, oh, well, isn't that um, Sidella and uh, Swaggins? And there's, there's a couple other guys who give decent amounts of money. No, it's, it's not enough. It's not enough. Not, none of that encompasses what Brightside Viking was. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. You know what I mean? They, they're, he hasn't found someone yet, Dave, hasn't found someone yet who could do it all. Not like that. So, but this way right here, the way he's about to, to, um, to, uh, to, sorry, I'm just for a loss of words right now. The way he's about to implement this plan is going to fail. <laughs> and I think he's going to drive, not everybody, but he's going to drive some people away doing it like this. So, and then it's just going to probably cause some infighting too. Because after a while, the people who've been there for a while, who have kind of followed the rules and paid their tithes and so on and so forth, when you see new people come in and get, uh, and receive, I should say, better treatment than some of the previous occupants, you're going to feel a certain type of way. Swaggins did. He felt a certain type of way when, you know, King Tut runs up in there and he, oh, hey, King Tut, how are you doing? Uh, how's it going, guy? I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're back. This, that, and the third. Now, granted, it's all greed. It's all Phil hoping that King Tut's going to give him more money. But he don't do that with Swaggins. Swaggins is known for giving big cheers and donations, and Phil's just like, huh? Oh, thanks, Swaggins, and then just keeps it moving without anything else. He's done that quite a few times. So when King Tut comes in and he's asking for this, that, and the third um, for uh, these type of concessions, and Phil seems willing to do it, not on stream, but seems to be willing to do it, you have to feel a certain type of way. And yet again, this goes back to something that I've said before, that Phil doesn't appreciate anybody. And in a lot of ways, which is the reason why I brought up Brightside Viking, the moment that he felt that he was in danger, he had to toss Brightside to the wolves. The moment that Phil feels like you guys are going to be there no matter what, I need to focus on these new people and build them up and give and indoctrinate them and give them more of the Kool-Aid to get them into that cult mentality, then he's going to. He's going to do that without even thinking about it. Because you guys are supposed to be already under the spell. You guys are already supposed to be under my influence. It is what it is. But the thing is, is there's a lot of jealousy over there, this pettiness over there. You see a lot of that infighting. Not on the regular. They've tried to get better about it because they're trying to come together as a collective for Phil. But you don't think that doesn't breed some type of animosity in some way, shape, or form? Time will tell. DSP News. Whatever you can to try to make newcomers feel welcome, they may come in in the fall and say, is this that guy who I heard about all over the internet? And let them know, yeah, man, come on, hang out. Come hang out with us for a few for a while. You're probably gonna have a fun time. Let's all let's all have a good time watching Phil play together, right? That's I think that could go a long way to making people feel welcome and make them feel like you know oh they could come hang out. There's a new cool place and you know that I that's what I want. Like I want people to come and feel good and realize this isn't a drama stream. This isn't a negative stream. This isn't what a lot of people try to say it is. If you actually just watch it for a few minutes, you realize it's completely not that at all. Okay. Um, and I think that that's the way, that's kind of the way to approach it. Let's make uh, everyone feel welcome and happy here in the fall as they come in to watch the new games and retain, excuse me, retain the newcomers who come in and have them hang out and keep coming back as regulars, all right? Because the truth of the matter is, guys, most of my support now comes from Twitch, okay? You guys, with your cheering, subbing, tipping, people pledging to my Patreon, buying stuff from Teespring, is now the majority of my income. YouTube now, because I'm making half as much as I used to, is way less, okay? And that's just being me being honest and realistic with you guys. It's nowhere near what it used to be. I'm going to be leaning on Twitch a lot. So what I need is to, to make it inviting for the people he to come. He leans on Twitch now. Come in and hang out and contribute and everything, all right? And the moder I've already added a few moderators recently. Who are going to help out a lot and i'm probably going to be adding a few more moderators in the coming uh you know weeks for the hardcore gaming season <clears throat> okay Need so more soldiers to join the gestapo of course the more hands the merrier please um please guys please be open and accepting of new people and let's have a good hardcore gaming season together all right sound good all right, you know, that's all That's all I really have to say about that. Um, you know, hopefully things work out. I'm very nervous 
about the full haul. I really am, but hopefully things will work out. We'll find out, okay? All right, so here's the deal, guys. This is how to play the game. Okay, so there you guys go on that. Now, what I took from that is um, basically just what you heard, especially at the end where, oh, I'm going to have new mods come in, basically more hands to do the work. People who I'm sure have contributed contributed quite a bit of money and have, I would assume, decent background checks <laughs> to make sure they're not detractors or they're not fan of detractors, which I assume some of them are. Um, only, I only assume uh, some of them are. And to help him basically weave out the others, which is all it is. That's the reason why people call it the Nazi chat because there are people in there who just watch other people and their behaviors. They watch what they say. How do you think people get banned so fast? Here, let me give you guys a solid example. Excuse me, a solid example. The next time Tevin is streaming, it's gonna, I, hopefully it's soon. Um, granted though too, I, I should probably start streaming myself, but I don't know. Like, like Mighty D just recently started streaming, so like there's just really a bunch of really talented uh, people already out there streaming, so I guess I can still hold off for a little while. I shouldn't be lazy, though. I start, I'm starting to sound lazy. Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> if you ever catch a, a Tevin stream, right, <clears throat> or anybody who, who decides to stream fills content like his stream itself, mirror it, if you will, watch what happens when Phil gets frustrated. Watch how the chat, if they have the chat up on screen, watch how they react to Phil being frustrated Phil having an attitude, and some of the new people who come in there who are to try to give Phil advice and whatnot, and watch how quick that shit turns into negativity and watch how quick they get banned for having an opinion, for having an opinion, or for that one or two people who see that Phil's chat is hand-holding him, which happens quite a bit, and are like, well, hey, why are you guys doing this? Shouldn't he just work this out for himself? And then watch how quickly they turn on him, on him, um, sorry. Watch how quickly they turn on that individual for that. That is what's awaiting anybody who gets ready to go over there. That's the reality. Phil can sit there and spin it to you any way he wants, but that's how that's going to go. Okay? That's how that daiquiri is going to get mixed up. And it's going to be like any other year. It's going to be, in honesty, like any other day. Because if you don't have a nice little trinket next to your name and if you and Phil is actually rather astute when it comes to the names that pop up especially ones that are new um, and he sees you there for a while and you, you might not have donated anything after a day or so I would assume that the mental note has been made amongst him and others because he whispers John, uh, James the Lesser Express Lane had actually proven that that um, Phil actually whispers to his mods and stuff like that if that's the case, then he's probably they're probably keeping an eye out on the newcomers. And they're going to watch you for a little while and see what's up. Now, if you haven't caused any problems and if you have been in the chat and haven't uh, and seem to be positive, air quotes, then they'll probably gift you a sub or something. But that'll be amongst themselves. Dave's not going to care about that. It's the bits and the cheers and whatnot is what he cares about. And if he has, if he has a, um, a little, uh, uh, like a little indicator for that next to your name then he'll know but anybody can be banned and plenty of people have so this positive this dsp positive bullshit that we've been hearing for the last couple of years you're hearing it right here and right now just in a different form they just have to work a little harder now they have to work a little harder not phil and that right there is one of the more interesting tricks that phil has pulled off how he can convince other people to do the footwork for him, for his benefit, and yet trick them in, and trick them into believing it benefits them too. That right there is kind of, it's it's interesting. It's kind of it's kind of scary in, in a lot of ways that one man could have not even a man, but goddamn that one man can have that much control over others, which kind of leads me back to, it, it, nah. For, Fred Fox was smarter. Freddy Boy was smarter about it, to be honest with you. But anyway, either way, it's just amazing that how DSP could have that type of control over other people. Willingly. They would willingly relinquish it. These are people who I've had arguments with in my, in my DMs and shit. 
about why would you feel the need to give him this type of money? Why do you feel the need to do this, that, and the third? Oh, well, why do you feel to do all these videos? Don't you know that you hurt Phil, this, that, and the third? I don't give a fuck about his, uh, his opinion or his feelings. How the fuck do I hurt somebody through a video? Like, seriously, when there are other people out there who have way more influence than me. I just have an opinion. If you think it's funny or if it makes you think for a minute, that is what it is. But I'm not advocating anybody go out there to his house. I'm not advocating anybody go to his chat and try to shit that up and whatever the case may be. He'll fall on his own. And I've had that stance since the beginning. And I firmly believe it. That's the reason why I haven't acted on anything else. Phil Wilf, Philip Burnell, DSP, Dark Side Phil, whatever the fuck you want to call him, will fall on his own. The noose is already around his neck. And he's just being a squirmy little pig and trying to fight his way out of it. And the more he struggles, the more he's choking. I don't need to do... No one needs to do anything else. Just sit there and chill. As egregious as the shit that he gets away with is, he's only hurting himself. He's only hurting himself. And the fact that this idiot was able... To, was not even able to. He willingly, willingly imprisoned himself in that hug box which we call twitch only proves how far he's fallen and proves that the moment twitch falls what is he going to do he has no backup plan he has no emergency funds he has nothing now but twitch that's all he has in theory he's done what i wanted him to do because i already said that's what he was going to do i told you from the hop that he was going to end up going over there and relying on that more than anything else if he didn't give more focus to um, to YouTube. He didn't. Now he has no NCN. Now he has to kind of deal with whatever ads come his way. Now he has to, he's resorted to holding his channel hostage and the content for that channel hostage so people can step up so they can click more ads or give him more money on other mediums that aren't Twitch. His fall has already been engineered. The noose is already there. He's already hogtied. The noose is already around his neck. Just sit back and watch him squirm. Sorry, that right there is really for just the people who run into my DM sometimes and want to have arguments with me about that shit because they're expecting me to say something that I'm not going to say. <laughs> Sorry, he's going to fall on his own. I've said from the jump, the greatest detractor DSP has ever had is himself. And it always will be. And now that Brightside Viking ain't there to save him, now that KG doesn't seem that interested outside of just chilling on the forums, who else is there to protect him? Sidella, who running around had to make apologies for fucking saying the dumb shit he said about Tevin, praise be almighty, only to still get shitted on by the fan base? And Swaggins? Nah, Swaggins don't give a shit about that. Swaggins is still chasing records. Okay, he's still chasing achievements by uh, Brightside Viking. So who else? And all the other guys who give big money, they don't want no part of the extras outside of Twitch. They're not trying to carry that shit over. And then this, this it's not even very well organized nor executed. All this extra trolling that was going on, on, uh, going on with Twitch and this, that, and third, or on Twitter and shit like that, it all faded away because there was nothing behind it. There was no steam there. In closing, as it pertains to that, before we get into the Snorper no, because I want to try to, I want to try to be, uh, I want to try to get a little bit more lighthearted about the situation. His 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 failure is complete. He's thirty six years old with no skills. He's thirty six years old with no skills. He's thirty six years old with no knowledge of self, or nor, nor the actual field that he's in. And I don't mean his business degree. I mean in YouTube and Twitch in general. He has no knowledge, no understanding, no insight in any of those mediums. That's why he can't give, uh, he can't actually articulate that to anybody else. He couldn't help you have a successful YouTube channel. He couldn't help you have a successful Twitch channel because he doesn't even know. Phil has said it plenty of times. He was the lucky one. He was the exception to the rules. The exception to the rules, eh. The lucky one, yeah. He kind of fell into it. He sucked off the right people to put himself in the position. But timing was one of the was one of the keys to his success. And I say that lightly, the word success in, in particular. That's what it is. 
He's someone who's grasping at whatever he can get his hooves on. And there ain't much. Not now. Look at... One more point before I move on. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I haven't done this in a while, so I'm usually more concise with this. Um, is look at the opportunities on Twitch. In truth, he's nothing more than a case study. He's a guinea pig. But think about the opportunities that he could have had on Twitch as it pertains to this bounty system. He was going to eventually flop out of that anyway because the money is not going to be worth him. Oh, my forearm hurts. Oh, my finger hurts. Oh, my hand hurts. He's not a gamer. So he complains about little bullshit because that's what he is. He's a bitch. A bitch complains about whatever they need to to gain sympathy or what is inconvenient to them. He can't even get the bounty system right. He can't even do that right. He can't promote himself right. He can't carry himself right. That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone, warning, what you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Guys. That might have been the guys, most guys. exercise I've seen a pig actually do in a while. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Snowpernell, DSP Gaming, YouTube money, and begging for help to keep new viewers comfortable. <sighs> here we go. I've been having some pretty interesting challenges with YouTube. And you may be wondering what I mean by that. What I mean by that is... Oh my god, dude, just shut up. <laughs> just shut up and stop whining. Oh. As you guys know, I lost all advertisement revenue on YouTube in July. It finally came back sometime this month in August, but, you know, I lost a lot of money there. And then, when I came back, I decided to make longer videos on YouTube. This is what people have always asked for over the years, and I finally decided to do it. But since I've done it, I'm not even exaggerating, my ad revenue on YouTube has been halved. I'm making half as much money on YouTube as I used to. I'm doing what you guys wanted. For years, you wanted longer videos. I'm giving you those now. And it's hurting me. I know that YouTube is a sinking ship. There's no way I could get DSP gaming to grow. It's done. Even if but I would have That's your own fault, though. You had, you had all the time in the world, and you had this window to do it. And he didn't. And he didn't do it. And obviously, he didn't do it. But he didn't do it because one, he believed in what he was doing so much that everybody else were idiots. They didn't understand what he was and what he was doing. And he didn't realize that that window, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, was slowly but surely closing on. And if if nothing else, what him what he's complaining about YouTube now, and what he has been complaining about all the things, the mishaps, if you will, that have been, that have been happening to him on YouTube proves that. the The window just closed on him. The door was already shut in his face. The back door is locked, and he's too fat to get through the chimney. Though he's not necessarily fat, but you know what I mean. He can't get through the chimney. His feet are too swollen. It is what it is. Time eventually caught up to him. As it will with anybody. You know what I'm saying? Him being in the right place at the right time, being dumb lucky, and actually having opportunities and taking advantage of those in a timely manner are two separate things. Change the formula of what I do on DSP Gaming to be longer videos, edited videos... Nothing's going to work. YouTube is saying we don't want people like Phil anymore. And the bottom line is it doesn't matter. Like my Twitch, my, my, my YouTube videos um, are what they are. You know, I know for a fact my YouTube viewership has dwindled because I've been focusing way more on, on Twitch um, in particular. So I know that not as many people go and even watch me 
on YouTube anymore. Okay, now overall, the overwhelming feedback I've been getting from viewers is this is a positive. We love the longer videos. You only upload a small handful of videos a day. It allows us to subscribe to the channel and not have our inboxes flooded. In fact, on average, guys, just listen to these stats, how good these are, okay? My, my subscriptions on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, have gone up every single day since I instituted the change to make longer videos. Every day I've gained subs. That has not happened in five years. That's not even an exaggeration. I have not had a consistent sub growth in five years on DSP Gaming. Now I'm actually getting it. it the way I see it, if I keep doing this, I may actually finally beat 200,000 subs. I may actually cap 200,000 subscribers on DSP Gaming in the next few months to year if I keep doing it the way I'm doing it. That's pretty crazy, right? <laughs> Number two, my engagement on the channel is way up. What I mean by that is the average length of that someone watches a video, I'm not, again, not exaggerating, it has doubled in the last month. So in the last month, the average you know, time that someone watches a video is twice as much as it used to be. That's a good stat. That actually makes a channel healthy in the eyes of YouTube. And people have been telling me this as well. Um, if you now search for DSP Gaming on YouTube, my channel actually comes up first, which didn't used to happen. If you search for DSP Gaming, it used to be a million detractor videos, and then DSP Gaming would be, like, halfway down the fucking page. Now, if you actually search for DSP Gaming, the channel shows up first, so you can actually access the content before you watch all the negative videos about it, okay? So, all this stuff is a positive, alright? All this stuff is a great positive. However, however, guys... There's a big negative, and like I said, the negative is ad revenue is way down. Now, you know, I'm operating a business. I need to make a certain amount of money to pay my bills. I need th that money. I really do. I need that money to pay my, pay bills. my bills. And I'll be honest with you guys. I've been leaning on you guys on Twitch to help me to make up for this situation with YouTube. I've been asking you guys to tip me and everything, and I, I do need your help in that regard. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. I may be, I may be living month to month, paycheck to paycheck, begging for fucking tips and shit on stream for the rest of my life. And but he's resided bottom... himself to that. Does that sound like a fighter? Does that sound like someone who I'm not going to let myself be held down by my situation. I'm going to continue to press forward positively and make the best out of what I have. Does that sound like that to you? That sounds to me like a quitter, to be honest. That sounds like what I had heard out of um, Wings of Redemption before that surgery. That's kind of what that sounds like. It sounded like a man who had given up, who was beaten, and who was res who resided himself to basically humiliating himself day in, day out to get what little money he could. That's what that sounded like. But yet, he lives that. And he considers that, he considers that thriving. And in truth, ladies and gentlemen, he's, he merely exists. He's not living. And I don't mean just on YouTube, just on Twitch. I mean just in life in general. He considers all that living his life. And he doesn't he doesn't understand. I, I think he really just doesn't understand that that's merely just existing. Living is so much more than your bank account. Living is so much more than shutting yourself away in your house, in your gated community, away from everybody but your soul slave. I mean, soul mate. I'm sorry. Life is worth more than that. It means more than that. But what else and who else does he have? DSP News? My YouTube presence has become half as profitable because I made these supposedly positive changes, all right? <laughs> now, if you think about it logically or statistically, it should not make sense, all right? It should, I mean, it should, this doesn't make sense. You're, make, you're putting out the same amount of content. In fact, it, let's say, for example, I now put out uh, a one-hour video. Well, that's 60 minutes. What I used to do is I used to put out six videos that were 10 minutes, therefore there would be six advertisements people would watch, and I'd make that amount of money. Well, now I'm putting out a 60-minute video with six advertisements placed throughout the video. So statistically, you would think, well, if someone just watches the video, you should make the same amount of money, right? Well, guess what? I did some research on my own last night, and I, I actually found out the reason why making longer videos screws people over on YouTube. <gasps> oh my god! And why my ad revenue is plummeted. I figured it out for myself. And here's why. Here you go, guys. You ready? Because this is kind of a revelation for me. And now it's kind of shocking that I'm realizing this is the reason. Okay? Here's why. It's because, ladies and gentlemen... When you watch videos on YouTube, you can watch them in various different ways. You can either watch on a PC, right? A laptop or a desktop computer. You could watch it on your phone. 
Now, when you watch it on your phone, there's different ways you could watch it. If you're just watching it through a browser, you're probably watching the desktop version. If you're watching through an app, like the YouTube app or a Firefox browser app, you're watching the mobile version of YouTube, which is actually different, okay? Um, when you're watching YouTube through various other pieces of equipment, like a PlayStation, an Xbox, your television, all these things have their own separate apps that you can download and watch YouTube videos through. And all of those also have completely different versions of YouTube that you're watching, all right? Do you want to play the fucking game? So I did some perspective, and here's what I found out. I did, I did some, not perspective, I did some comparison. So last night, I was streaming, and I streamed Fire Pro Wrestling World, and I did fantasy simulation matches, where it was cartoonish characters beating the crap out of each other in, like, death matches and stuff, all right? I wanted to watch this back again last night, because I thought it particularly was pretty funny, and I wanted to see if, watching it a second time, if I could actually make more, make more so, uh, order of it, because it was so chaotic during the live stream, I didn't even get to see, like, half the action going on in the ring. And it was actually funny, because I watched it again last night, and I saw people doing moves to each other and everything that I had missed the first time when I was doing the commentary, because it was just so much happening at once, all right? So... I'm watching this back. Now, this is a video that's 40 minutes long. It should have had four ads now, on it. with that being I'm... said, this is someone who said that he'd be good at commentating <clears throat> for the FGC. But in a fast-paced game, like, I'd, I'd shudder to say, but I'd say Dragon Ball Fighters, for example, would probably be a good example. He wouldn't be able to keep up with that from a play-to-play -play standpoint. That's obvious. But, so, I just want to throw that little innuendo out there. Second thing... And uh, I think it's equally as important. We had heard him in the last video say that Machinima told them back in 2012 about the changes that were going to be made as it pertains to the, implement uh, the implementing of mobile and so on and so forth. So you can't tell me that Machinima over the years didn't tell him or, or didn't tell anybody else for that matter how YouTube was going to be affected on these different platforms. You can't tell me that they didn't have an understanding of that they didn't have an understanding of it, and in turn, it didn't get regurgitated to him. Um, I don't know if he missed the feeding that day, or you know whatever the case may be, but I feel like he already knew that. And yet again, this is just perpetuating the excuses that come out of it, or that he's about to have come out of it. And yet again, it just comes back down to just dishonesty, because either he's incredibly incompetent. Or he's one of the craftiest con men to ever live. It has to... It, there's a third option too, but I just don't want to throw that out right now. Um, we're going to wait for the next video to do that. So, just out of those particular... Out of those two particular options, which one is it? Which one is it? It has to be one of them. How is it that you've been in the game this long and you don't understand how it works? You don't understand all the little nuances that that this all entails. How does this that huh? What? Like how does that how does that just not that doesn't compute for some reason? It, it just doesn't make any sense when other YouTubers who have done this, especially detractors, I should say, who have been doing this way less way less time than he has, understand it better than he does. You, you really, he very much lived hand to mouth. I still think he does, but he very much lives hand to mouth. He very much stands proudly on the fact that he survives because of other people's generosity. Or on other people's time, if you think about it. <clears throat> you know, Twitch is his boss, and when Twitch tells him to do something, he does it. And him being banned the first two times kind of prove it. He's still an asshole. He's just not as much of an asshole. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to curb himself a little bit because he doesn't want to get banned again. And you don't hear him boasting about his invincibility as he once did. You don't hear the bullshit about, oh, Twitch loves me in my streams. You don't hear that nonsense anymore. So where was the change? And what was the change? Just saying. I was watching it in the Firefox uh, app on my television. I have a Samsung Smart Type TV, and it has an app built in to watch, well, I've downloaded it actually, to watch Firefox, you know, watch the internet. So I'm watching it, and only one advertisement played at the very beginning of the video, and once that was done, not once during the entire 45 minute video did I see another ad. <laughs> Wah, I'm not making ad revenue. Wah. Basically, here's a whiny baby. Now the thing is, I personally last night 
placed advertisements on this video at 10 minute intervals. So if YouTube actually fucking worked, there should have been four advertisements playing on that video and it should have been credit for four ads. But I only saw one at the beginning of the video, okay? <laughs> so after that, I said, well, wait a minute, I gotta compare here, all right? Um, let me go to my phone. So I actually have an iPhone, okay? And I said, I'm gonna play this video back in my browser on my phone and see what happens. So I did, and I saw two advertisements, okay? Then I went on my desktop PC and I watched the video and I saw all four advertisements that I had placed, okay? So you see what I'm saying? Uh, wh what I'm seeing here, basically, is that YouTube, even in 2018, right, is still not a website that fucking works the way that it's supposed to. I want you guys to think a little bit, or not think a little bit, you guys think a lot, but I want you guys to think for a minute about how his energy, his energy is being wasted here. I want you to really think about that for a minute. He wasted... <laughs> As I said earlier, on the on the, the on the the best aspect of it is he spent two hours of his time watching his own videos, which is nothing necessarily wrong with that. But he did it strictly for ad revenue, not to learn what he's been doing wrong or what he could have improved on. He did it strictly for ads. Anyway, anyway, <clears throat> he had, and I've said this in the I think in the last broadcast, he has all this drive. To try to figure, <laughs> to try to figure out where he could get ads at, <laughs> where the ads are showing up in his videos, right? Okay, he has all the drive to do that, but yet he doesn't have any of the drive, or any of the intuition, to try to better himself in other aspects, especially on stream, which is his bread and butter. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm astounded in a lot of ways because. He, it, it comes down to, I guess, it's not just time management. His time management is poor, obviously. But it's really how he uses and implements his time. And he does it in the worst possible way. Believing in his heart of hearts that uh, <laughs> that he's doing something. That he's proving a point. You know what I'm saying? That he's exercising an idea. And in actuality, it it makes people look at you and be like, okay, so you could spend two hours doing that, but you couldn't take 20 minutes to look at some of the people that are in your, in your, 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 not in your fan base, but that are in your lane, as in what you do. You couldn't take, you couldn't use that time to edit a video together or at least start the editing process. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't implement that in a much more creative way than chasing ad revenue chasing a little bit of ad money you couldn't even extend your stream a little longer that day to make that happen or you could do something probably i would think much more productive and spend some time with cat take a bath clean your house you know what i'm saying do some dishes prepare a meal for yourself for the next day, something, go out for a walk. I, I mean, just just some options. But he wanted to chase. He wanted to sit there and chase ad revenue around his house because <laughs> he had to go into three different rooms, to well at least two different rooms to make all that happen. All right, <laughs> it's it's so funny. Salt, salt, salt. salt Ninety percent of the time. It is YouTube's fault. YouTube, if it worked, what would happen is no matter where you watch the video, how you watch it, you would see the advertisements four times, four ads per video, right? Um, if it was a 40 minute video, basically 10, every 10 minutes an ad play. But that's not what happens. Some people see one, some people see two, some people see four, okay? So in essence, here's what's going on, okay? People are watching my videos through various means and everyone's basically at least seeing one ad usually. But not everyone is seeing all the ads. So to give you some perspective, that same Fire Pro Wrestling uh, video, if I had made it four videos of 10 minutes each, everyone would have watched four advertisements because it automatically plays an ad at the beginning of the video. Okay? So I would have got credit for four ads no matter who watched it on what venue. But because I made a 40-minute video, some people only watched one ad, some watched two, and some watched all four. So in essence, for the same content that I used to put out, I'm now making way less money because YouTube doesn't fucking play the ads properly on all these different versions of the site. The money is mine, and I want the money. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give money, 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 money. 
Okay, so that's the that's the actual truth of the matter. Even though longer videos will get you more engagement on YouTube, they'll put your your channel in better search rankings. You'll probably get more overall subscriptions and, and followers, and maybe over time viewership will grow because people will will subscribe and watch more because they're not. Uh, annoyed by a ton of smaller videos. Overall, your advertisement revenue is way lower because YouTube doesn't fucking play the ads properly on other things other than just the desktop version of the site. So that's what happened. That's what happened. Um, and I'm like, I can't believe... Like, after doing this comparison last night, I was like, can you believe that YouTube in 2018 is still this fucked? Like, they never figured this out. And I, I actually remember it was around 2012 when basically YouTube kind of came out and said, well, just so you know, guys, more people are watching videos on mobile now than ever, so we're changing channels so the channels will now look better on phones, and we're doing all these things to adjust for mobile versions so you guys can keep making money. And I remember working with Machinima at that time, because Machinima even said, you know, you guys are probably going to end up making less money over time because everything's going mobile, and YouTube hasn't adjusted to the times. That was five, excuse me, that was six years ago. In six fucking years, YouTube has not figured out how to properly run advertisements on mobile devices. Six years. What the fuck? What the fuck were they doing for six fucking years? What, did they have their thumbs up their asses? Like, this would be like the priority one. Everyone is watching our videos now on other formats, so advertisement revenue is going to drop dramatically unless we fix this. Oh, we just won't do it. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, huh? So, obviously, this is annoying, and this is very worrying for me. Let me step in for a minute. So, <clears throat> when people ask you for shorter videos and you refuse to do it, so they ended up unsubscribing and leaving, and when your views dropped year after year after year, you didn't fix it either. You said they were the ones that were wrong. They were the ones that didn't stay loyal. And they're the ones that went off and became, and followed the tractor videos and this, that, and the third because they didn't appreciate what you did. If they were true fans, they would have sat there and kind of just dealt with it. That's essentially what you implied. So you didn't make any changes either. And those changes affected your income in the long term. So the mistakes that you're blaming YouTube for still doesn't account for the mistake that you made. In the end, you still would have been screwed. Regardless, especially being that your views just kept falling off, falling off, and falling off. Goddamn, you really are a Muppet. <laughs> Kind of shit needs to come out. This kind of shit needs to be exposed for what it is. Behind the scenes, though, you guys are just making lots of money. Tell me how you do it. Don't lump us in the same category with scam artists like you. Treating nice old people into giving you their money. Just how big of a jerk what? are you? All the money's my caregiver fee. I humor them and fear all their dumb small talk. Don't I? It's greed. It's greed. Greed is massively strong. I have no, no fucking, fucking self-control. Control. Because as you guys know, as I've told you, YouTube is still a significant part of my income. Um, it looks like now, as long as I'm going to continue to make longer videos, it's going to be less a, a, a big lesser chunk of my income. Because I, I, unless I go back to the shorter videos, I don't think I could ever make as much money as I used to on YouTube, unless, unless... Give me monies. Let the green roll in. Let's say over the course of this hardcore gaming season, because I'm making shorter videos, or excuse me, longer videos now, a lot more people maybe check out my stuff. People who maybe usually would watch only during the hardcore gaming season and come in naturally to subscribe, maybe now they'll stay and keep watching the content next year because now I'm making longer videos and I don't flood their inboxes. And then maybe naturally the revenue will go back to at least where it was. I don't know. I mean, there's potential, but it's not guaranteed. And it certainly is disheartening for me, okay, <clears throat> to look at this. And <coughs> there's nothing saying, else right. What really, what he's trying to do, like, and now honestly, he still wants to go back to the shorter videos. At the end of the day, he would much rather do that. That whole, you know, looking at the laptop, cutting, 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 he's okay with that. As I said, if you watch him sometimes, you see him have like a tick. It's kind of like a tick where he'll, he'll, he'll make a slight turn at a certain point in time and then he just kind of goes back and whatnot. And that's because he's so used to doing it you know, year in, year out. So there, there you go with that situation. But now he's already named off all of the positives of doing longer videos. And he named off the negative that apparently outweighs the positive in the fact that he doesn't have any ad revenue. So now he has another, now he ha he's looking at it, he's looking at it, I'm sorry, as, okay, we're gonna put DSP Gaming back on the chopping block and I'm gonna get them to, I'm gonna basically squeeze them for even more money 
on Twitch, or as he said, I'm going to lean on you guys a little more to help support me and whatnot, while biding, buying his, biding his time and letting you, uh, DSP Gaming try to grow back into a more profitable state, which is the same thing he could have done with KO Gaming, but he didn't want that. At the end of the day, he always wanted DSP Gaming to be successful or at least to be respectable. And he's going to go ahead and try to hang his hat, which is conveniently being located on screen right now, on the fact that if he can get himself to 200,000 subscribers and whatnot, that'll prove without a shadow of a doubt that despite all of his mistakes, I was still able to push forward because look, I'm at 200,000 subscribers. And when people call him out on, oh, well, that's only because you changed the format. That's because you finally listened to your fan base and 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 did what you finally what they asked you to. No, 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 it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I made these changes because I needed to do it to save my business, not because people told me to do it. I did it because I needed to save my business. Don't be surprised if that's going to be the tagline when that time comes, if it ever comes, or some variation of it. Because why not? Why give credit to people who you feel that are beneath you? And for him to admit that, oh, the only reason why now that, you know, the channel's starting to become profitable and there are more people there now, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm at 200,000 subscribers, possibly moving his way up to 220,000 subscribers, and so on and so forth, is because I made the changes needed to, to do so, to push myself forward, which is kind of the same, kind of the same stitch he uses for when he moved over to direct captioning. Caption, sorry. Same concept in a lot of ways. Same idea. Same idea, same idea, same tag, same excuses, just rehashed and reused them for something else. Something else that can be sprung later on. And he, in, in a lot of ways, he might be. it might be true, he might be right, that his fan base is so Mm. the memory is not exactly a good thing over there for some of those people so because of that he can manipulate the narrative any way he sees fit if there's been a decent amount of time or if he can impose his will on them kind of like with that whole television situation we'll tackle that in another video Oh, uh, I actually donated the money for the TV to myself. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. Who said that? I didn't say it. Ban you're banned. You're banned. I, I never said that. You're lying. You're banned. And he had no choice but to ban that guy if he did ban him. I'm pretty sure he did. He had no choice but to ban him because he's pushing a narrative that's a total lie, right? Even though there, are, it, we talked about this a couple of broadcasts ago about the evidence is right there. It's presented in your det in detractor videos. How do you... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you excuse that? It's your words. There's no manipulation in any of it. It's what you said. So how, how are you going to get yourself out of that? But somehow, Phil finds a way. Hell. Like, I did nothing. I didn't change my content. I didn't piss off my viewers, you know? I'm doing actually what the viewers want and have always asked for. And YouTube, all of their metrics are telling me your channel's doing better. You're getting more subs. You know, your engagement has doubled. Everything is looking good on your channel. Oh, by the way, make half as much money now. Because we suck on our end and we don't know how to fucking do our own business properly and put ads on your videos like they're supposed to be. It's not about the money. It's not. I'm not here to take a paycheck. <laughs> Pretty hypocritical, I agree. I just, you know, it's just so frustrating. All right? And I just want to share this with you guys because, you know, again, I'm the only person probably figuring all this shit out. Fuck you, you fucking greedy piece of shit. Go fuck yourself. You know, most people just go with the flow and they're like, well, you know, well, less money, whatever, and then they complain. But me, I, I, I actually did the research and find all this shit out, you know. <laughs> My goal is to retain the people who come by for the fall. New, newcomers come by, I want people to make them feel welcome and happy here. Even though there are tons of regulars who I see in the stream chat every day. All right. Uh, I, wish, I want people to come by and be able to feel like they can hang out and be chill with me, enjoy games with me, have some interaction with me, and you guys, I want everyone to have a fun time. So I'm going to need your guys' help too. You guys are the regulars who are here all the time, right? You're the guys who, no matter what game I'm playing, you guys come by and hang out with me, and I appreciate that. But what I need from you guys is basically um, a lot of, 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 
How can I say? Make newcomers feel welcome, okay? Please do whatever you can to try to make newcomers feel welcome. They may come in in the fall and say, is this that guy who I heard about all over the internet? And let them know, yeah, man, come on, hang out. Come hang out with us for a, few, for a while. You're probably going to have a fun time. Let's all, let's all have a good time watching Phil play together, right? That's, I think that could go a long way to making people feel welcome and make them feel like, you know, oh, they could come hang out. There's a new cool place. And, you know, that, I, that's what I want. Like, too. <clears throat> if it's supposed to be a cool place and a, a comfortable place to chill, why is it that Phil gets butt hurt when the stream chat uh, gets derailed, if you will, um, into conversations about sports, about movies, about comic books, about anything and everything that's not Phil, or certainly a conversation that Phil can't follow. Then, what, if it's supposed to be this type of progressive environment, if you will, <clears throat> why does he get butt hurt over situations like that? And there's evidence of, p of people in the chat talking about a uh, another streamer, or talking about football, or talking about uh, just a sport in general, really, or talking about something else, and Phil goes ahead and gets on his little phone there and goes into the chat and is like, hey, guys, uh, you know, I understand that you guys are having this conversation or whatever, but why aren't you guys paying attention to me? Like, huh? Like, <laughs> I mean, are you engaged to the chat? Like, you, you have to give them prompts? Like, they have to give you so much, you know, so much quality time, if you will? Was it not giving you enough TLC, Phil? Is that what that was? That was pretty pathetic when he did that. That was probably one of... That had to be considered a low point for him. Not his lowest, by far, but certainly a low point when you had to jump into your own chat and tell these people, pay more attention to me. That's kind of sad. I'm just saying. But yet, he wants to bring in that new blood and whatnot and make them feel welcomed, but I guarantee you if the conversation gets derailed away from Phil to something else or somebody else who's more important or who's more interesting or whatever the case may be, Phil's going to be up in there. Or a mod will get in there first and be like, hey, uh, try to keep it, keep the focus on Phil and keep it on the game and whatnot because they don't want to ban you for that if you're a new person because that's going to make them look stupid because they know the tractor screenshot all those conversations. So they don't want to necessarily do that, but trust me, if Phil gets irritated enough, he'll prompt one of the, the mods and you're gone. I want people to come and feel good and realize this isn't a drama stream. This isn't a negative stream. This isn't what a lot of people try to say it is. If you actually just watch it for a few minutes, you realize it's completely not that at all. The Phil Drama Show every day. We need more money. We need more money. That's what this stream is about. Okay. And I think that that's the way, that's kind of the way to approach it. Let's make uh, everyone feel welcome and happy here in the fall as they come in to watch the new games. And retain, excuse me, retain the newcomers who come in and have them hang out and keep coming back as regulars, all right? Because the truth of the matter is, guys, most of my support now comes from Twitch, okay? You guys, with your cheering, subbing, tipping, people pledging to my Patreon, buying stuff from Teespring, is now the majority of my income. YouTube now, because I'm making half as much as I used to, is way less, okay? And that's just being me being honest and realistic with you guys. It's nowhere near what it used to be. I'm going to be leaning on Twitch a lot. So what I need is to, to make it inviting for the people to come in and hang out and contribute and everything, all right, and the moder I've already added a few moderators recently who are going to help out a lot, and I'm probably going to be adding a few more moderators in the coming, uh, you know, weeks for the hardcore gaming season, <clears throat> okay? Please, guys, please be open and accepting of new people, and let's have a good hardcore gaming season together, all right? Sound good? This guy's a no-talent hack who can't do anything for fucking self. I'm a nobody who can't do anything for myself, and I have absolutely no talent, you know? Mr. Gao. It's pretty good <laughs> self-reflection there. We start out with Latino DSP fan who did a 100-bit cheer and said, you're the man, or, or Phil is the man. He was the guy that got caught masturbating in front of children. It's the guy <laughs> watching his Twitch. Is that really him? Is he the yes. one that got caught? Matt? Yes! Really? Yeah, I'm the guy. Uh, I'm watching you on Twitch. Uh, Viva Mexico. Only he said it in Spanish, but I felt I would read it in English, or translate it to English, so you guys know exactly what he said. Wow! Shout out to Freddie Bosley, who cheers us. How does having a finance degree help you run your business model? Um, quite frankly, uh, the, the real, the, the one real thing that it helps me with is doing my taxes and understanding taxes. I'm good at lying. <laughs> um, and, and write-offs, and... Basically having to, how, like, for example, I have to do this really detailed spreadsheet of all of my expenses over the course of the year. 
And basically, I keep track of every any any penny that I spend that goes towards something that I'm doing content for, right? Anything that I buy that eventually gets into a video, that gets into a stream, that's used for a stream or a video, anything that literally comes into my office and is used is part of that. Like, and I keep these very detailed expenses and everything. And I learned how to do all that in college. But outside of that, psh, I mean, I went to school for finance, which was a lot of things like how to invest in the market and shit like that. I, I never had firm, any money. And it's funny, too, because he doesn't even believe in the market. He says that he looks at stocks and bonds and stuff like that as scams. There's plenty of footage out there to back that up. Um, in any case, it's funny that um, he never, that I, I always felt, and I still kind of do, that what prompted this whole tax situation is he was caught writing shit off on his taxes that he really shouldn't have been writing off. And I think that was one of the warning signs or one of the prompts that caused them to look at him closer. I honestly feel. I feel like he was writing off frivolous shit or shit that he just was so egregious that you know he shouldn't have been he shouldn't have been doing um, that he was writing off. I wouldn't be surprised if the idiot was actually <laughs> if the idiot was claiming that his uh, his house was actually an office building. If if he could, he would. You know what I mean? Uh, because he pinches, he pinches for everything when it comes to his taxes. And like I said, I always thought, and I still do to some degree, that that's one of the things that ended up getting the, uh, that's one of the situations that caused him to fall on the IRS's radar. Like I said, haven't necessarily been proven that yet, but I still, I still feel it. Eventually, ladies and gentlemen, eventually. You do it. <laughs> you know? Well, I went to school for something that I could never afford to do. That was really useful, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Um, <clears throat> not at all. What I can tell you is this. At least I have a, a, a large, a big picture understanding of how things like credit cards, mortgages, loans work. Uh, thank God. Because a lot of people yeah, don't. Yeah, thank God what? Because you're in debt in all of those categories. He's got business loans. <laughs> business loans on a YouTube channel. Uh, that's insane. He's got business loans, credit cards up the ass in debt. It... <laughs> They must have not have taught him anything in school. I, I don't know. I, I don't exactly know how the education system in Connecticut works, but uh, Phil obviously was not paying attention. Something because it's ridiculous the amount of debt that this man has. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this is someone who ran up credit card debt so he could go to tournaments. That was what was important to him at the time. He didn't have enough liquid assets. And whatnot, he didn't have enough free money to go ahead and do what he had to do, so he charged everything to a credit card. And then even admitted that he didn't even recruit, uh, recoup what ended up going into the trip, the mileage, plane tickets, hotel stays, you know what I'm saying, meals, this, that, and the third. And yet he wants to boast about what he learned in school, though he didn't implement any of it. It all went right over his head. Already. End up getting into these things, these situations where they get a loan they'll never pay off. You know, it's like terrible. Some of the things that happen and people get sold these products and not even understanding what the fuck they are. Uh, in a lot of ways being mi told misinformation about what they are. And the next thing you know, you'll be paying this off for 40 years. Like, wait a minute, I borrowed $5,000 eight years ago. I thought that it should have been done by now. Oh, no, you're paying the minimum, and that's going to keep going for 35 more years. Like, what the fuck? How much money am I going to pay by the end of this loan? Oh, $25,000. What? What? And that's the situation that a lot of these things are. It's insane how, how these companies are getting away with this shit. Um, but anyway, you know, I have a big picture understanding of this kind of stuff. <laughs> no one is... told you you had to pay the minimum. If you're paying the minimum on anything, you're already fucking up. You're already messing the game up, to be honest. It, first things first. And I'm not, not going to sit here and go into a large class as it pertains to finances or whatnot. But I will say this much. As it pertains to your credit cards, do not, I repeat, do not, unless it's a, like a, an emergency. And I mean a real emergency. Not like your fucking PS4 broke, <laughs> broke. And you can't wait till payday to get another one. So you just run out and get it. Unless you actually have like, you know, the liquid assets to do that. Don't do it. Do not charge anything to your credit card that you cannot afford to pay off at the end of the month. Matter of fact. Or by the end of the billing cycle. Matter of fact, do not charge anything to that account or to your to your credit card that you can't pay off, that you don't have money in hand before your credit card bill even shows up. Unless, like I said, it's an emergency. Because that's what a credit card is there for. It's there for an emergency. It's the funds that you do not have right then and there and you are 
your backs against the wall. To sit there and be frivolous with it is what gets people in trouble. Because it's easy to look at your credit card statement and be like, oh, well, I can just pay the, I'll just pay, you know, the $25 or whatever the monthly, um, the, the monthly balance is or whatever the case, the minimum balance, I should say. And then, I, you know, I'll handle it later. And then later becomes three months later. Later becomes nine months later. Next thing you know, it's been like a year and some change. And you're like, and then like your entry, your introductory inter, uh, interest rate has finally expired. And next thing you know, you owe all this money and interest. And now you're fighting that. And now you went from, oh, I could have paid off the balance or I could have paid over the minimal, minimal, minimum monthly payment to now I can barely make the minimum monthly payment. You got, and like I said, that's long-term thinking there. And I'm sure, I'm confident that someone like Phil, that's the reason why he has all the credit card debt he has. Because he just kind of skewed by paying the minimum monthly payment and not giving any forethought to anything else. And he was okay with it. He was fine with it. Because as it pertains to Phil, he doesn't like shelling out a lot of money if he doesn't have to. Even to his obligations. Hence the reason why he's in so much debt. It's ridiculous that someone like Phil had made as much money as he did and he didn't have the condo paid off or he couldn't unload it and that he doesn't have at least half of whatever that house is worth or what he owes on that house paid off at this point. If you have a home, you should be, if you can, I should say, if you can, if it's within your means, you should be paying over the minimum monthly on your credit cards, on your loans, on your mortgage. It's, it's, it's only smart business, to be honest with you. If not, you're going to be in there for the long haul. And sometimes it just doesn't have to be that way. It really doesn't. Now, like I say, stay within your means. You know what I'm saying? Don't sit there and, <laughs> and throw large amounts of money at these things and not be able to pay another bill or whatever the case may be. But no one has shitty months back to back to back. You're going to have some good months. So either save that money or put that money into paying down other things that will put you in the long run that will put more money in your pocket. Just my personal opinion. But when I go in to buy a car, I understand how the loan works and I can negotiate terms and shit, you know? Um, but for the most part, in relation to my business, not so much, you know? Did I ever expect to be a guy who was playing games on the internet for a living for eight straight years? No. Disgusting beggar. <laughs> and there was no school to do that either. You know what I mean? It was pretty much a fly by the seat of your own pants, learn learn on the fly kind of a deal. Um, so there you go. All right, Lorcatron cheered and said something like you, I think this is a meme. I don't know what it is, but I'll read what he said. He says, you knew that was going to happen, right? You knew that shit was going to happen. I don't know what he's talking about. I think it's a meme, but. Help! Save the pig. <laughs> What the heck? A pig with a party hat. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Piggy. It's Ziggy Piggy. Now, sorry, before we see the piggy continue to run, because that shit's hilarious when he does that dumb shit. I want you to think about what he just said there for a minute. He was in debt in his, as he likes to call it, his previous life before YouTube. He had a bunch of debt walking into YouTube. YouTube put him in a position where he could pay all that debt off, right? All that previous debt, only to get himself into more debt later. The attention span and memory of people outside of Phil's fan base isn't as short as some of the people in Phil's fan base. So just remember that. Okay, he had a shitload of debt that he said many times before, before YouTube. All he did was perpetuate more of that once he got into it. Because, let's be honest, ladies and gentlemen, who takes a business loan out on a YouTube channel? Seriously, I want you to think about that for a minute. You can buy the components and pieces that you need for YouTube if you want to take it at least semi-seriously. You can get all those things piece by piece by piece as most people did. Tevin did. Praise be almighty. I'm sure a lot of people did. We here at GTG Network and Productions did. And the content is still shitty. 
<laughs> so is the quality. But still, it's it's a I don't need to rush out and do that. This doesn't pay me. I don't and I'm not super invested in it. You know what I'm saying? I don't do this for a living. And even if you were doing it for a living, as most YouTubers do, they still invested piece by piece by piece. There's no reason to go all in it and then the channel tanks. And which is a very real possibility. It's a reality if you want to make this into something full time. All right, let's continue to watch the piggy run. Save the pig, the game. The whole game, you're trying to save the pig's life. Help! What pasta do you prefer? I prefer a penne. Help! Easy to eat. All right, guys. So that is the end of that. Um, that was... I don't know. I think it, it went as, as I kind of expected. It's been a while since I've had an opportunity to do some of these things. But um, I still felt that it was worthwhile. Uh, hopefully my next video won't be too far out. Hopefully. Um, I want to try to do some stuff over the weekend. Uh, possibly. And um, like I said, I do have the first episode of Gout and, uh, and, Gout and Wine. Uh, coming out soon. I hope you guys like that. That's gonna be in that panda had a uh, birthday that just passed. I think her birthday was on the 29th of August. Praise be almighty for reminding us on Twitter about that. Um, have a she's gonna be uh, basically part of my first episode. So I hope you guys enjoy that. As it pertains to Phil's situation, I'm gonna actually see if I can try to find one more video before we go. As it pertains to Phil's situation, um. <laughs> It's, it's whatever he can do at the end of the day. It's it's whatever he can do. And it's sad in a lot of ways because what is it all worth? You know what I mean? Like, where does it really, what does it really do for him and what does it really give him? Now, if you're one of these kind of hardcore individuals in his fan base, you're probably like, oh, well, he's winning. You know what I'm saying? He's going to stay winning and you guys can't, you guys can't do anything about it despite your best efforts. But you make it sound like anybody's try like people are trying to take him down, like seriously trying to take him down. He's doing it himself, and he's he's doing a great job. As I've like I said, he's his he's his greatest detractor, and I still stand by it to this very day. YouTube was the worst thing that ever happened to him. I swear to you, I swear to you on everything I know, YouTube was the worst thing that ever happened to Phil Burnell, or Philip Burnell horse lover Burnell, if you will. It was the worst thing that could have ever happened to him. It really did. It really was. In the same way that, well, not in the same way, because Alexander the Great is just that, Alexander the Great. But in the fa same way that Alexander the Great couldn't keep his ambition in check is the same way that YouTube was for DSP. He, could, he had so much come at him, and yet so many people who praised him and whatnot because he was one of the one of the first who did it and he was one of the few options that were out there that he believed his own hype and he believed the lie that he put out there he believed it he got high on his own supply if you will now remember what he said earlier on in this broadcast that it's a business that this is a business i found the video i was looking for it's by mr huffstuffs uh, DSP gaming, not a business. So there is a lot of positivity going on behind the scenes. The problem is all the work that I put into this, this, this entity, this, it's not a business. It's cause it's not, I don't own a business. I don't legally own a business anywhere. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about how things are going with myself and my business here, uh, you know, in Washington state where I live and give you kind of a status update. All right. So that's really, really where I'm at right now with how things have been going this year. I'm okay financially, but I'm only okay. I'm not great and I'm not terrible. I'm kind of in the... Sorry about that buggy video uh, mechanics there. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> Let's start that over real fast. And I just want you guys to hear that small bit of... Uh, of uh, I want to hear, just catch, give you that small sound bite. Middle. If things stay the way they're going... I'll probably just... So there is a lot of positivity going on behind the scenes. The problem is 
all the work that I put into this 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 entity. This it's not a business. It's because it's not. I don't own a business. I don't legally own a business anywhere. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about how things are going with myself and my business here, uh, you know, in Washington State where I live, and give you kind of a status update. All right. So that's really really where I'm at right now with how things have been going this year. I'm okay financially, but I'm only okay. I'm not great, and I'm not terrible. I'm kind of in the middle. If things stay the way they're going, I'll probably just be okay forever, and I'll probably have this looming debt over my fucking head forever, and I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. If things get better, then I'll probably get out of the debt, and that'll be great, because that's what happened back in the day. I was in a lot of debt, and then I started on YouTube. All of a sudden, I started YouTube as my job. I paid off all my debt, but then I racked it right back I up. told y'all. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know if it was in this video or not, but I told y'all. I told y'all that he was in debt beforehand, and then he used YouTube to get out of it just to get back in it. I'm a cute and cuddly dog in a sharp suit. Don't ever doubt me. Well, you can doubt me, because like, I'm wrong like anybody else. You know what I'm saying? I have, my, I have my moments and shit. But for the most part, though, you know what I'm saying? My memory isn't as strong as Argent. Shouts out to Argent. And when I, and Ar, speaking of which, Argent, I, I saw your videos about the alleged flagging that you might have done, and it hurt me to watch that. And I'm I'm afraid that I'm gonna have to put that in my Monday Matt video because I, I I was I was just highly disappointed with that. I mean, it's, I'm just kidding. It was a parody, but it was fucking hilarious. If you guys have not seen it, please go to Argent's channel. He did two of them. They're fucking hilarious. Um, they're fucking hilarious. Shouts out to Argent. Um, in any case, though, back to back back on topic. I told y'all. I told y'all. So don't let him sit there and perpetuate, meaning Dave, meaning DSP, uh, perpetuate bullshit to you about his knowledge and information as it pertains to finances because it's bullshit. Bullshit. All right, let's get back to it. When I moved out here and then all that shit happened last year that fucked me over, okay? Um... To summarize and finish, how can you help me to continue to be successful and keep this business going on YouTube and keep putting out free content for you on a daily basis? There's something important going on regarding myself and my business. I absolutely have to address it uh, in this video. I already talked a little bit about it on my pre-stream. Okay, that's today. the end of that actually, because um, we're gonna I'm gonna start a series soon because I, like I already have gout and wine. I have the regular news and shit. I don't know. Like, I have to kind of get back into the flow of it. But I'm going to... We're going to do, like, a revisit type series where we're going to go back and look at some of the key points in Phil's life. And one of the first things I think we're going to hit is leading up to this whole tax situation. I am going to find every video that I can, that I can generally remember. So I'm going to just try to find all of them. Every video that talked about the situation from the moment that he allegedly told you uh, he knew about it. And, and all of the innuendos and breadcrumbs he laid out leading to when he actually told us. And we're going to go through and have like long series like that. Now the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, those videos are going to be long as shit. Hopefully you guys don't mind. Those videos are going to be long. So, super long. Super, super duper long. So, uh, I, I hope you guys are... <laughs> hope you guys won't mind that, but that'll be later on down the line. Let me get gout and wine out first and see what people think of it. And then we'll go from there. But uh, there you go. That I just wanted to... I, I didn't know that Mr. Huff stuff had that part in there. I just wanted you guys to hear about this not the business situation. That's really what I wanted. But it, it was just kind of dumb luck, dumb luck that that kind of fell into place. You could say that I am the exception to the rules as it pertains to that. So try to remember that. No, I'm not the exception to the rules. Fuck that bullshit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late. Never breaking unreliable coverage that you can't count on a Gautopia and GTG network and production. I am your host slash anchor GTG and I'm signing off. It feels good. Hopefully I won't, it won't be uh, another large gap between this broadcast and the next because uh, we, we have a lot to cover and uh, especially before the holidays come about. But uh, yeah, I'm your host slash anchor GTG and I'm signing off in the broadcast uh, I don't think I did too bad still <laughs> I can't
I can I shouldn't take it. Well, I guess that's a little harsh, but everyone can be a star. Sometimes niggas gotta read their script and play their part.